This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. 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 Welcome back to another Shields of Shame video. Today's video was submitted by viewer Kyle Joslin, a self-styled government watchdog from the YouTube channel L Jaws. Please take a moment to give him the credit he deserves. Previously on Shields of Shame. In a startling turn of events, Judge John Rollins of Greer, South Carolina, found himself in a contentious encounter with a peaceful protester. Brandishing a firearm, Judge Rollins confronted the protester, who was peacefully exercising their right to free speech by holding a sign critical of the judge. The scene unfolded as the protester stood atop their pickup truck, stationed on a public road within a public parking space just 40 yards from the judge's auxiliary business. Clearly unsettled by the protesters' actions, Judge Rollins resorted to taking matters into his own hands, sparking widespread controversy and raising serious questions about the boundaries of judicial conduct. The officers on scene protected the judge and arrested the protester, briefly placing him in handcuffs while they investigate him, not the judge and his criminal actions. Please like and share to bring awareness to this kind of corruption. And as always, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you, and always record your interactions with any public servant. It is your First Amendment right. You just stay put. I'm just telling you. Where were you he on He told me truck? if I moved, he was going to just shoot me. Okay. I was standing right there at that corner, holding my sign. Okay. Okay? At what point was your phone on? My phone was on the whole time. But but, but I won't, I, and I, I had not pulled any gun, I hadn't done anything. It doesn't matter what the law says. People do what they want to, right? Well, right? He's getting out of that truck right. and there's that gun. I don't know what he's going to do. He's just sitting there, he's baking me, and I'm, I'm getting agitated. Jocelyn's talking like he just happened to be, you know, somebody just walked up and pulled a gun on him. Jocelyn's talking like he just happened to be, you know, somebody just walked up and pulled a gun on Sure. That man pointed a gun at my head. I said, you let me see both your hands hot, right? So I just, I grabbed him right there and tried to pull him off the truck. Well, he didn't pull, so I just pulled him to the corner there. If there was yeah. a fear involved. I thought he was going to kill me. I thought I was dead. He had that gun pointed in my head. He had his finger on the trigger and he was shaking. Fear involved. Trying to calm the guy down because he was just irate. And, you know, I don't know the situation. I don't know if they know each other or what, but he was freaking out. And I was, I was confused because, like, yeah, he's got a gun, but mm -hmm. he hasn't threatened you. He didn't pull out his gun. Mm -hmm. You're the one with your gun out. Mm -hmm. You know, he hadn't done anything. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is invoke the castle doctrine, and I'm going to drop this son of a bitch in the yard. Drop this son of a, 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 drop this son of a. Despite what the corrupt judge said in the previous video, Mr. Joslin has no prior criminal record and is clearly being targeted by the judge and his minions. Um, Clark at um, Landrum, look, look, Clark at Landrum sent me, he called today about 2.45. I wanted to know when the next court date was, and the caller ID was Trey Jocelyn. Okay. And then, while I was up there, I got my, I was getting my reports and stuff, because I'm going to marry, uh, Barnett told me to get, get from y'all when we get done with the reports here, because I'm sure. going to get a, uh, harassment order. Is that a order? Term. This is he asked for the for the tape from the court last Wednesday, which is fine. I just mm -hmm. brought that showing the dates and stuff. And they're getting that for him. They didn't give it to him right then because they gotta cut it oh, up. Yeah. You know, cut it, it all that It stuff. takes time. So and he gave them a bunch he he gave them a bunch of lip at the window enough where the chief came up and was taping him. Yeah. Just just that mouth running. And he he left after that. The next day, he's down here in front of the office. Like I said, I didn't know I didn't know he's out in front of the office. Did, yeah. did you see him? Um, I had seen him. Um, yeah, seen him. <laughs> on, that, on that day. Well, I, I didn't know because we used the back door, so I there wasn't, wasn't any reason to be going you know, looking for anything. Sure. And and the the next day, of course, is when the incident happened. Okay, so um, start with me from the beginning of that because I know um, I know you probably told that story to your sick in the face and. Yeah, no. Well, let me lead up what led up to it. I, I think I, um, I, I'll um catch the, the rest of that afterward, okay. but let's just, okay. let's just hit the and, and, you know. and to start with, I don't know this fella. I've never had him before me in court other than that Wednesday when mm -hmm. I told him to leave. Sure. 
And then, so I don't know. It's not like I sent him to jail or something. Yeah. Or we we'd have any animosity to me to start with. So I don't know. I don't know what all this is about. What all this is about. Good morning, Judge. Do you have a ticket, sir? No, sir. Uh, I would uh, like to swear. Well, out you don't, warrant. sir. Sir, we don't swear out warrants here. This is a courtroom. If you need a warrant, you need to talk to police about swearing out a warrant. It says I can ask a municipal judge. No, and sir. It, I don't. I'm not. I don't investigate cases. Well, I'm just swearing out a warrant. I'm not. I'm not swearing out any warrants. I don't investigate cases. I'm holding court here today. Okay. Well, the, the judicial, the municipal judicial handbook states that I, can, a citizen, can swear out a warrant to no, a sir, municipal no, judge. No, sir. I'm not arguing with you. We're not swearing out any warrants. Okay. So who did you say I need to do it to? I don't know. I'm not doing oh, it here. Okay. All right, have a good day. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, is this hearing recorded? Sir, let me explain something to you. I don't know why you're here, don't care why you're here, but you're not going to disrupt my court. So my suggestion to you is, is to leave, and if you don't leave now, you're going to jail. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Okay. So when, when we get up there that day, though, I've already read the thing, mm -hmm. the, the, the Bolo thing. They contacted me at the... At the at Landrum because the chief of them thought I needed to know because he's going to be coming up there. Mm -hmm. And then when we told him to leave, he left, but he sat where I could see him. And he could see him. He could see me sitting on the bench from where he was at outside in the in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. well, the, well, I don't know if you've been up to Landrum, but what they've got um, they got the building, mm -hmm. and then there's a space and maybe where you can pull in parking, and then there's a little street. And then, I'm, and by a little street, I'm talking about it ain't really two lanes. It's a one lane. Yeah. Of. And then, then there's the main parking lot over there. That's the city parking lot. Mm -hmm. And he's about two parking places into that, with his truck facing this way, where the driver's seat is looking in that door, where I'm at. Okay. So mm -hmm. was he in the truck? Or? Well, well, when he left, he went and got in the truck, and we were finishing up some stuff. So I figured he'd get on his phone or do something and then leave. Mm -hmm. Well, we were in there getting our stuff together about 15, 20 minutes, and he's still sitting there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not going to leave <laughs> my truck sitting out there, too. So I'm not going to just go out there and watch him follow me home because he didn't follow the highway patrolman home. Yeah, did they give you that the same day as he made that, um, the sled fusion center? Um, pamphlet or whatever with his face on it stuff they gave they, me that that morning after oh when they knew he was coming I mean, when he knew he was coming to court yeah they gave it to me that morning was he how'd they know he was coming to court he told me probably coming to court okay so he called ahead well not so much called ahead but but they dealt with him and he's he, he said he was going he told him something he's going to come get the judge to get a warrant kind of thing okay. and, I, and i'm only up there one day a month uh, yeah. and i'm only up there one day a month so that sure. would be that would be the day i'd be up there sure and that very morning too they done found him sitting out in front of the chief's house <laughs> scoping his house out mm -hmm. so we knew something was something was going on sure so but as long as he can behave he's public you know he didn't have no business being up there because he didn't have a ticket or nothing yeah but but he came in and and we're we're holding he comes in and he's, he's dickering with uh, Levi Bocamp up there about taking his phone. Mm -hmm. Levi told me, you leave your phone in the car. And he's getting with me. I don't have to leave my phone in the car. I said, sir, is there, is there a problem? He said, he's want my phone. I said, you take your phone, put it in the truck, or you stay outside with it. Mm -hmm. We're holding court. And, uh, and he went on the outside and, and put it up. And he come back in. When he come back in, he was quiet, didn't do anything. And he sat back at the back. Just watched. He had his hand in the lap and just watched. Okay. And, and he was fine. Like I said, there went up to that. Then he come up and wanted to have him warrants issued. I told him, sir, we don't issue private warrants in the municipal court. Well, what was that for? Um, what were the warrants for? He was wanting warrants against the officers there in town because they had dark windows. The window okay. <laughs> just, just crazy stuff, you know. And I wasn't going to get into it with him. That's why I told him you just just need to leave. Mm -hmm. And and because I knew what he'd been doing with everybody else, you just need to leave. And I didn't run him out. Will you Supreme Court this? And I said, sir, you need to leave before you go to jail. So he was referencing a Supreme Court, Court case. decision, huh? And I said, you just need to leave before you go to jail. Mm -hmm. And that's when he went out there and he didn't leave. Was he causing a disturbance in the court? In the courtroom, wasn't mm -hmm. Okay, for you to be able to, or for you to, um, I guess, not really, for, for well, you to threaten him with jail. Well, you know, what, what, you, what you have to do on the contempt is you have to tell him, you know, you, you're getting disruptive. You need to cool it. 
So he was actively disrupting mm -hmm. court at that mm -hmm. point. And, and then when, when I told him, and there wasn't no reason for him to be there. So I, I'm not going to, uh, we don't have questions from the, from the audience in court, yeah. you know. So it's time for you to, it's time for you to go. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and he didn't, and he's sitting out there playing creep games like he's doing with the highway patrol and all of us in that letter. Okay. And then men and going to follow, follow me home. He didn't found out where the chief lived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's going to follow me home and see where I'm, or where I'm working or whatever, and I wasn't going to have that. Yeah. I'm, 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 that's dangerous. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. playing that game. And, uh, and then so that, that's, that's that. Mm -hmm. And I called Sled and told him, and they said, well, he's we building a file and all this stuff on. And I talked with the solicitor then. Mm -hmm. And, um, Solicitor Barry Barnett. Spark Barnett. 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 Okay. And then um, I went on the grid. I went down 14 to grid. And I didn't see him, so I was, I was fine. Got got the grid doing my stuff. And so I called. That was that was that Wednesday. I called about Thursday or Friday. I talked with the chief. Anything going on? No, nah, it's, it's cool off. Okay. Whatever. So I'm, I'm not I'm not looking for him. <coughs> I figured yeah, he sure. got, got mad and went on home. Got what he wanted. Yeah. And, 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 I did, and I didn't know I didn't do anything other than tell him to leave. Mm hmm and God didn't want to escalate it anymore to have to, but you got to be firm with somebody like that. He'll just he'll just keep talking that crazy talk yeah. in the courtroom. So, so uh, Monday came along. I went to Union, come to the office. I did my stuff, all that. Tuesday, same thing. Wednesday, um, we're there all day. Wednesday, so we get there probably seven thirty, eight o'clock. Me and my wife, we park in that big back parking lot. There, yeah, and we just, we just come in the back. And we we ride drive together on it. Mm -hmm. And lunchtime, I went out for lunch to get us something at the uh, Empanada Shack, and I went out the back door and walked up, not Randall Street, but walked up the, the back alleyway yeah, sure. and jumped over and went that way because that's quicker, and mm -hmm. came back in, and we ate. We had clients come in that day. Nobody said nothing about the placard, but I don't know how long he was out there with it because, like I said, I don't know nothing about it. Sure. And, and then, so the next, <coughs> next day would have been uh, Thursday. I come from uh, Union Court, and Union Court that day, um, I come up 101, 14, not 14, um, 101 from Woodruff, mm -hmm. and I come in and I turn on Snow Street. To come over to 14? Well, that, that's not, excuse me, that's not Snow Street. The one there where the little shop is, is off one uh, off 101, right there before you get to the um, Victor Ball Field. What uh, street's that? Talking about Cannon? Yeah, that, 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 well. Right next to the gas station? Yeah, there's a little gas station in the barber shop. There. Is that mm -hmm. Ken? Is that yeah. Ken? Turn, turn left there, and I come in there, and then I turn on where Cannon's drive-in is, and then take that School Street mm -hmm. thing up. And I went across School Street, and you, I kind of I kind of looked to see if there's any parking, but I normally park in the back, so I'm going to park in the back. If you get there, sometimes you park in the back. So I go go to the um, alleyway to park in the back. Mm -hmm. Then boys have opened that new um, appliance store there, so they had their car truck parked there and blocked everything up. So I said, so I backed up, backed up, turned around, and there was a parking place in the corner parking lot. So I, I parked there sometimes too. Mm -hmm. So I just parked there and I backed my truck in and put my uh, blinds up and everything. And I had, uh, I ate a sandwich on the way back. So I had an Arby's bag and I had an Arby's cup. I had my water, uh, my little uh, gray jacket I had on when you saw yes, me. Sir. Had it on and I stuck my water bottle in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got this hand free. And so I'm walking up the street and at that time of day, the sun's awful. Okay. And I've, I've got bad eyes anyway. And the sun's awful, so and these, these glasses turn dark. So I'm, I'm, I'm walking, and I'm not paying any attention, but I see a fella in the back of a truck there. And at the bike store, that's not unusual at the bike store because they unload bikes and stuff, all sure. that too. So I'm, and I'm not looking for them because it cool, you know, it cool yeah, down down. So, so as I get right, I'm walking. Down the sidewalk, you know, it ain't, it ain't that wide. Yeah. So I get right where that truck bed is, and he's like, like down like this, and I'm not, I don't know who he is or paying much attention to him. And right as I get to the side of him, I hear, you wasn't something like, you weren't expected to see me here, were you, Judge? And I stop, because I don't know where he is at that point. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like a voice. And I turned, and I see who it is. I said, Mr. Jocelyn, no, I didn't. And like that's the wall, mm -hmm. and so he he can touch me where I'm standing right then. Sure, and he's right up at the edge of the thing, and he had that placard kind of holding it, talking, and I wasn't paying long. I, I could see he was holding something, so I just stepped back to the wall and I said, "No, I wasn't." And did, I said, "Do you remember what he was saying as he was talking?" Or well, just like just like you weren't expecting to see me, were you? Kind of just a yeah. smart ass kind of thing. 
And so I said, no, I wasn't. So I'm going to get a picture of you, and I'm going to dial 911, because I'm, I'm more or less trapped there then, because I, I, I can't. <laughs> that came out. They've been dealing with this asshole since about June. Well, I'm, by that time, I'm as close from, you know, from me to you there, so I just back up against the wall, and I'm sitting there waiting for him to do it. And I said, you just sit right there and keep your hands where I can see him. You know, I don't know what he's up to. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm up against the wall, and it's dark. You can't see these things out there with that bright light and stuff. So I'm fumbling around with it and finally get the camera to come on, and I do that, and then I finally fumble with it and get 911, and I call Greer, and I tell him who I'm in. And this fellow's out here jostling that they got like a... a sled file on mm -hmm. and he's threatened me and all this stuff and i'm down here y'all need to send somebody out here okay and they got all that on, on your tape the exact mm -hmm. words and I, what i'm going to do what i'm going to do is invoke the castle doctrine and i'm going to drop this son of a bitch in the yard but i'm i'm i'm, I'm pretty shook up now because I'm, I'm i'm stuck and i can't i, I don't want to walk down the street i don't want to run i'm just there and as long as i see his hands i ain't real concerned about it you know he, he's holding that placard why don't you want to walk down the street? Because I'm, I'm stuck. I'm not going to let somebody shoot me in the back of the head. I don't. I don't know what he's up to. Okay. I don't so, know what he's up to. I mean, I'm safer. I'm safer with my back to the wall than me walking down the street with him to my back. Okay. Okay. I mean, because my intentions were was to call y'all. I'm gonna stand there till y'all got there. Y'all handle it, and I'm going to my office. Mm -hmm. And I could get a report that he's out there screwing around in front of my office. That that was my intention. Okay. Because because really him standing there ain't nothing. That's a public street. Yeah. And he know and he knows that. Mm -hmm. And the sign don't bother me. I, I I don't even know what the sign said till I till I opened it and showed y'all and read it. I mean, because yeah. I'm not I'm not focused on what the words are. I'm focused. Mm -hmm. Because he's known, known to be armed, and I don't see nothing. But as long as I see his hands, it don't really make much difference. Yeah. Me, you know, so. So I call y'all and I figure y'all be there in a minute. So I just might bide my time long he's standing in the back of that trunk. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm safe. You yeah. Know? And so I'm sitting there waiting on y'all and I called a lady on the on the 911 and she, I, I explained to her and I was pretty agitated when I talked to her. Cause I don't know what he's up to. And I'm by myself, I'm, by myself. I'm an old man by myself. So I called her and instead of her saying, they'll be right there. She said, there's something going on, it'll be a minute. They may be a while before they get there. Yeah. Well, that ain't a good answer for me. Mm -hmm. That ain't a real good answer at all for me. So now what? So I'm telling them, just keep, they'll be here in a minute. You just keep showing me your hands. We're, you know, we're fine. And I'm just sitting there like this against the wall. And he's taping me at that point. I, I, he got his phone out somehow or another. And he's taping, taping me. So I'm just sitting there, just keep showing me your hands. Just keep showing me a hint. Well, he's, he's still holding that thing and holding the phone, so I ain't real excited about all that. Mm -hmm. Well, at some point, he he puts the sign down or he lays it. He's, so I'm here. The, the, the edge of the truck would be there. Uh huh. And he's starting moving around in the truck now. Now, I don't know if he's trying to leave, trying to get me, shoot me, or what. Because if he got on the other side of that truck, he could have got me real easy. Mm -hmm. and, and there I'd be. I'm in open then. Yeah. And, and if he walked around on the ground, he's got me. Mm -hmm. he, I, like I said, that's your young fella. And he's a big old strong looking fella too. So I mean, I don't, I'm, 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 it's, it's changing now that he's sitting, in, he's getting out of that truck, the situation changed. As long as he's in that truck and I see his hands, I ain't worried about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and y'all supposed to be there in a, few, <laughs> in, a yeah. few, in a few minutes, you know, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, cause I don't know what's going on. She just said there's something else going on. So I don't mean that bit, we'll see you tomorrow or, or what. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to emphasize to her, this fellow's been threatening everybody. And here I am. He slipped up on me. Because like, like I said, if, had I seen him, I'd turn around and went the other way. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I, I, I'm, I'm blind to him until I get right beside him. And he's there. And he says, you wouldn't expect him to, you know. So, yeah. so I'm surprised. Sure. So, so I, I back up. And as long as everything's <laughs> fine. So he gets, he starts monkeying around. And he turns and starts to step over the side of the truck. He didn't get to the gate where the, where the steps are. He goes to the side of the truck. Mm -hmm. And it's a high jump. It's too high for him to just hop off, you know. So he gets his leg over, kind of. And when when I see that, there's that pistol. Mm -hmm. And and I'm thinking this ain't good at all. So I go grab him, and I was going I was going to pitch him on the ground because he wasn't going to come out there and fight me. Yeah. And 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 I was going to pitch him on the ground. And when I started to grab him and pitch him, he pulled back. And when he did, he kind of turned this way, and I grabbed his his um, gun hand. Mm -hmm. 
And I grabbed it, and when I did, I pulled him down, and I just squatted down, and he hit his head or whatever on that tailgate. Mm -hmm. And I had that gun hand, and I had a death grip on it, and I pulled him, and I pulled my gun, that's why I put the gun to his head, and I said, you freeze, or I'll kill you, or whatever. I don't know what I said, but I was it, real bad then. Something along those lines? Yeah. So, no, I, I meant, I won't kill your ass or whatever. I, I may have said something real ugly. I don't know. Okay. But, but, I, but that ain't, at that point, I'm by myself with an armed man that had come to my office to do whatever he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And as and, and long as I had his gun hand, we were good. And with that, with that gun to his head, he wasn't fighting. Okay. He bowed up. But, but I mean, if he pulled out, he probably got shot. I mean, I just I tell you, yeah, that short. Because I ain't that. that <laughs> it, le it leads to your mindset. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, I, what, I'm just sit there and let him pull his and blow me away. I mean, it, they got crazy. But he had sense enough to once once he got that, he froze. Mm -hmm. And as long as he did that, we're good. Because hopefully y'all are on your way. Mm -hmm. And then about that time, he's hollering. Help me, somebody! Something. He, he's hollering around. I'm telling you, be be still and be, you know, so please be here or whatever. And and this fella walks up that was the witness. I don't know if he saw anything that happened before that. All he sees is an old man robbing somebody or something. You know, as far as yeah. I know. And he's there, and I'm telling him, call the law, mm -hmm. call the law. He says, take that gun away from that man's head. No, I mean he's, he's more worried about him than me. Sure. And I tell him I'm I'm a judge. This fella's been threatening me or whatever. I'm trying to explain to him I'm not just somebody off the street. You know, yeah. this, this robbing somebody. Call the law. Let's get here. And and he finally, I think, called the law. And by then, y'all rolled. We're there a little bit longer. He's running his mouth to him. See what he's doing to me. All this kind of stuff. And then and and the phone is on the ground because he didn't have it anymore. I, I I I when I grabbed his hand, I think it come out of it and it's down on the ground because I picked it up off the ground when we got when y'all got there. Okay. And um so. All that's going on, I'm holding him, and the police come up, and y'all stand back because y'all don't know what's going on either. Yeah, sure. I, I understand. And, and and I'm hollering at her, I've got him. Somebody come up here because I didn't want him to let go of him, come off on me, you know. Yeah. And so when y'all got it all started, then when y'all, we broke it up. Okay. Um, which hand did you grab? Do you remember? I'm thinking it was his gun hand. Okay. So good. I had that. So he's, he's laying in like that, and I've got this pulled this way, and his head's up on that up on the tailgate. Okay. I may have had his left hand, I don't know. Okay, one of them. But, one, but I had a hand. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and if I had his left hand, he could have reached back and got his pistol. But I don't ever remember him doing it. So I'm thinking it was his... I had a sandwich on the way back, so I had a garbage bag, and I had a garbage cup, I had a water bottle, my little gray jacket I had on, you saw sir, had it on, and I stuck my water bottle in my pocket. You yeah. know, it wasn't, it wasn't like he, he reached over to grab my, my hand. Yeah. And, and he submitted it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Once my pistol came out, he submitted, and I did no more than what I needed to do okay. to, 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 to hold you, him there. Y'all got there, because y'all were on your way. Sure. Did you hear, um, what was he saying when you um, moved to the rear of the truck and kind of had that? I, I don't know if he said anything. You didn't hear anything? I didn't hear anything if he said anything. I've, I've got hearing aids, so I don't know if he said He could have, I don't know. You didn't hear anything? I, I didn't hear anything if he said anything. I've, I've got hearing aids, so I don't know. It would be on that tape, I would imagine. Did you hear anything? Um, you said he was jaw jacking with the guy that came walking up. Mm -hmm. He was talking to him. Do you remember? Remember? More like, you see what he's doing to me? And he, and he said, I've got seven kids and all that. And I may have said, you should have thought of that. You know, so I, mean, I don't, I, like I said, I'm just, I'm just keeping him focused mm -hmm. on, on the situation. And um, the, the fella, he's talking to him more, more like, you need to see what he's doing. Like he's calling his attention to me mm -hmm. more than him putting himself in that situation. Okay. What was your mindset during this? I thought something was going to happen bad because y'all weren't there. I mean, <laughs> under normal things, I figured y'all would be there in a couple minutes because the police station's right there, you know. But but it, with him, I because because had he never moved out of that, it would never escalated how he if, if he never moved out of that um, bed because I could see his hands. Okay. And I would have been when y'all pulled up. I'd been laying up against the building. Sure. Do you remember? Uh talking about the castle doctrine to the 911 operator? I may have said something to her. I mean, I'm, I'm out there, I'm being threatened. I'm being threatened. 
Okay. I'm being threatened. I believe, and I, don't quote me on this, mm -hmm. but it's not, but I'm going to invoke the castle doctrine and lay this son of a bitch out in the yard. Well, and I may have said that. Okay. I may have said that because I don't know why he's there. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to emphasize to her if she tell me it might be a while. <laughs> I, I can't wait on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So severity of the situation. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait on y'all. I mean, it's not like, yes, sir, we'll send them to be on their, their own way kind of thing. She told me it'd be a while. Yeah, we, we didn't yeah, have... Uh, well, I'm, I know, and that ain't y'all's fault. We're, but, uh, we were all running from... I, 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 I understand, and, and that's not y'all's fault, but that yeah. put me in a bad situation. Sure. That ain't what you want to hear when you call 911. <laughs> you got somebody that's been stalking you. That we'll get there when we can. You know, you know and, I, and I don't fault y'all for that, but that didn't help. But that's the reality. Yeah, yeah, that didn't, that didn't help. Because um, I'm sitting there thinking then, they're coming in a minute, they're coming in 20, and I've had, I've had them, I've called them at my office 911. It wasn't no super emergency. Yeah. But instead of them being there in about five minutes, it may be 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long with that situation, I don't know how long that's going to last. You know, that ain't good. Okay. Um, oh, so the prior situations with Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. that you're aware of. Who made you aware of those? Of other people's situation with of, of what you well, you were telling me something about a highway patrol trooper. That's on that on that thing from the slip. Okay, you're telling me about Lyman PD police chief? Well uh, uh, Landrum PD. Landrum PD. PD. They told me that morning. Okay, so they had told yeah, you Yeah, they that. told me that morning because they, they 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 gave me a heads up about him coming because of the, the, the daycare thing. Okay. We, we were coming to court. Um, we had court. That was our monthly court. This this we're in October, so that was October's court date. We do one day a month in Landrum. Okay. They gave me a heads up that he may be in court because of a daycare. Because of the daycare thing. And what was the daycare issue, if you recall? They told me that they had like at the daycare they were doing a special event, or it was the evening when they do their thing, and they got like maybe an off off duty county officer mm -hmm. that does you know just watching security kind sure. of thing and and this fellow rolls up his children are there and he rolls up and he's like stretching and pulling his coat up and he's got a gun there and he's on the premises and that made somebody uncomfortable and they they mentioned it to the officer he couldn't do nothing because he wasn't he's just auxiliary or whatever yeah so they called Landrum PD it's in the city mm -hmm. they called Landrum PD and officer wise went out there and he told him buddy put it in your car Mm -hmm. And he complied, but then then he got sideways with Wise, and then 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 they, they that morning, Wise's car had the had the tin on it. That's what he was fussing about okay. about the tin, and then and then um, they told me about that because he said he was going to come to court and see something about the judge or something, and so um, I knew he was coming at that point. Then that morning, while we're at court, they said they found him that morning outside the chief's house. Okay. So it's just, it's just, and I don't know if it matters. Yeah. But, but what I've got in front of me, I've got a bolo from Sled that goes back to July or June, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. And then I've got them saying, we're dealing with him with this stuff. And then, then I got this thing saying he's in front of the chief's house mm -hmm. when there ain't no reason to be in front. He wasn't charged with nothing. He wasn't charged with nothing. Sure. And, and then, then he's coming to my court. Okay. How did you hear about the trooper situation? On that, on that, on that thing. Okay, that was, that's on that's on the boat. Okay. <clears throat> um, had you heard about any other incidents with him? Not, not at that time. Okay. When when did you hear? You said you spoke with. You wanted me at least yesterday. You had told me to speak with uh, Barry Barnett. Uh -huh. Um. Did he make you aware of? Oh, well, when so so when we when the thing happened at the courthouse. Mm hmm. And he didn't um, leave. I called Sled, mm -hmm. and they put me with um, Drew Led Ledbetter. Put me with Drew Ledbetter, and he's like the regional or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he told me that yeah, we know him, and uh, be careful with him. Uh, we'll put this down. He said, "Did contact the solicitor? They're working on a on a on a file thing with him." So I called Barry, and Barry told me what was going on with him. He'd been down there at the courthouse, monkeying around with everybody down there, and he, he's done everything, all this video stuff, and and threatening people and stuff down there. And that was that was after after he left the courthouse. 
and before what happened here. Okay, so that was after the courthouse incident. You talked with Jake um, Ledbetter mm -hmm. from SLED, mm -hmm. and then you talked to Barry Barnett, mm -hmm. the solicitor. And they informed me of the other stuff. Okay. Do um, you remember any of that other stuff? Just him worrying the, the magistrates and all down at Spartanburg. Okay. And then uh, he's been following officers and stuff like that. Okay. And so how? And how? And in addition to the highway patrolman, he's been giving like the county people for fit. Okay. Um, and then what? But what Barry's talking, telling me is he's a he's a dangerous thing. We got a big old file built on him. We were trying to figure out what to do with him, as far as doing an injunction or whatever they needed to do with him. So Barry described him as how? As dangerous. I mean, they're all dangerous. Yeah. Okay. But he described him specifically as dangerous. Well, his description to me was dangerous. You took it as dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, he didn't say this is a I don't remember him saying this is a dangerous individual, but he could have because they, they just everything they did with him, it just keeps. Okay. It keeps escalating. Um, do you happen to remember the day roughly that you talked to Barry? They'd been that that Wednesday. That Wednesday, same mm -hmm. day as the court day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I do have that's the report for Landrum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause yeah, because I, I, I called him. I called him to let him know about about that fellow. I didn't know because I, I didn't know it was Adam, but they'd already presented with me. He's they had the bolo on him, mm -hmm. and and when I talked with with Drew, it, yeah, the solicitors got a, a file on him. They they built a file on him, so that's why I called Barry. So his behavior that day at uh, Landrum made you feel how? I, I, I was apprehensive of that. Okay. Because I don't know, it, like I said, we deal with people up there and people get pissed off all the time and they go home. Yeah. Here's this fella, ain't even got a case in the in the courtroom. <laughs> and he's sitting out there looking at me through the window <laughs> in his truck. Yeah. And the police goes out there and tell him to move on. He says, I ain't going nowhere. Okay. You, you see what I'm saying? Most sure. most reasonable people, yes sir, and they go on. Because mm -hmm. they know they ain't got no business being up there. But with him... That's that he's sitting out there for the sole purpose of intimidating somebody. Okay. And putting them in fear. That's, 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 like I said, if if he was just somebody that I'd never dealt with and I didn't know all this stuff, mm -hmm. and he's just sitting there with that placard in, John Ronald's thug, whatever it said, <laughs> have a good day. I'd walk to my office, call y'all. Sure. And, and it had been, that had been all of it. Mm -hmm. That'd been all of it, but but this this fella that and and I know he's armed because mm -hmm. even in the bolo it says he's armed all the time. Mm -hmm. And Barry was telling me that they had it. He's a CWP and they're trying to get something figured out where they can pull the darn thing. Okay. And they uh, but you didn't see the weapon until no. until he until he come over the um, he he had like one he had like one of them little um not a rain jacket but you know like one of them little smooth like you get at Costco and stuff and he had it zipped up. Mm -hmm. And he's awful round like he had a flak. He may have yeah. uh, had a um, uh, Kevlar or something. Okay. He's awful round with you know like y'all are when you get your thing up. Sure. And it, mm -hmm. it's cut right, right to the edge. Mm -hmm. And I already knew he carried because the uh, officer told me mm -hmm. before that. Okay. And 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 and, and then when, he, <laughs> when he's getting when he's climbing over and he's climbing over with his head towards the door. So he's doing this number, and when he does, that thing comes up, and it's it's there. Okay. Did he reach for it at all? He's all up on the side going going for it. Okay, so you lost sight of his hands. But well, he... his hands are over on the other side, so I didn't I didn't see his hands, okay. and I don't know if he's gonna come off and draw or what. I don't know. Okay, but you didn't see him like go. For no, it. I, I I can't say he grabbed it. Okay. Um, did he but make it, any um, any? Other than what you perceive as threatening talk, did he make any direct threats to you during that time? When he wasn't recorded, because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't think I surprised him as he surprised me. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He's just gonna be up there at lunchtime with that placard. Yeah, up, 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 up my office from away from my recorder. Didn't expect you to see you coming from the left when you're off. Well, or or right. maybe he didn't see me the first day. Yeah, and, and unless I had business going up that street, I wouldn't see him either. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's not like I and I, and he may have been baiting somebody to, for me to come out of the office, go up there, what the hell are you doing, kind of thing. Yeah, I'd never done that. I'd call y'all, and y'all would handle it. You, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But once he got me surprised that I'm there, and and this fellow way he acts, I'm not. I can't move because I don't know if I'm gonna get shot in the back of the head or what. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, but um, 
far as threatening talk, the more the more sinister stuff he said was when I just walked up and he surprised me. Okay. And that's you didn't expect to see me here, were you? you so know? it was it wasn't exactly what he said. Um, how did you? I'm sorry. How did you take that as sinister? Well, if you can kind of describe it's it. It's like way. it's like I've done fuck me up today or the other day. I'm here now. You know. Okay. You know that kind of thing. Sure. And, and the bottom line is, he didn't see me at Walmart. Yeah. If he'd been out on 29 with that car, who, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm coming to my office, and, and he's 30, 40 feet from my door. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, but and, and so I can, and like I said, I'm in a situation then, I ain't going to put myself in a position where I'm going to get shot in the back. The easiest thing for me to do is just stand right there, call 911, and wait for y'all to come up here and handle it, and I can go on to my office. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not exposing myself. Sure. As long as he stayed in that trunk with that placard, I see your hands. We're fine, bud. You know, but once once he starts maneuvering around and stuff, I don't know what he's going to do. It was it, what it, you know, did, did it cross your mind that maybe he was trying to um, create some distance from you or leave? He wouldn't. I don't know what he's doing. He could, he could have come over the edge of that thing and drew that gun and drilled me right against that wall. He could come over that thing, because y'all, like I said, y'all wasn't there. Yeah. And, and he could come off that side of that truck, walked around there and knocked the hell out of me. Yeah. And me, 61 years old, him about 30-something, a big old fella. Because, you know, legally he, you know, legally as far as the law is, he wasnn't doing anything. No, I, no, 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 other than surprise me. He's on a public street, yeah, 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 yeah. in the back I of the truck, that. holding I understand the that. I understand that. And had, had I not known what I knew, Previous. Previous. Like I said, if he's just somebody cold there, that's just for the officer to come up and make a report about. It. Okay. But but I but I I know it's John Dillinger. John Dillinger? <laughs> he's a gangster. I know I know he's been monkeying around with everybody. John Dillinger? No, no, oh, I, he, I I know he's a crook. Okay, you're describing him yeah. as John Dillinger. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I know he 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 ain't just somebody off the street. Okay. So you were familiar. I've had, I've, I've, had, I've had people we've done divorces for. They get up there, they write nasty stuff on Facebook. They'll see me on the street. They'll say, "Mother, all this yeah. stuff." And I know they they ain't out there to harm nobody. They just getting it off their chest. But you took this as a different. Well, when 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 I when I work in Landrum at the courthouse, mm -hmm. you didn't come up to the courthouse again and do something. You go into the, to a to a computer and you find out where I work. Mm -hmm. And you're waiting down there when when I come back from from work, my work, and surprise me. Mm -hmm. You wasn't expecting me to be here. What would that? And you knew all the background. Of it. Sure. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Sir. That that because like I said, I don't go pulling guns on people. I don't I don't look for nobody to to do nothing like that. I'm a judge. I have to act a little different than people. But this son of a gun, he's looking for me. He's pushing buttons, and like I said, he pushed a button that day. Okay. He pushed a button that day, but he set up a situation where it's like, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to follow you home mm -hmm. kind of thing, and I'm going to do you just like I've been doing everybody else. And the thing with the police is they've got a radio. They can call back up and stuff. I'm out there by myself. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't had a pistol, I don't know what I'd done. So you were... Um... So during during that whole encounter, um, how did you feel? I was scared. I mean, that that some gun. I, like I said, as long long as he was standing in the back of that truck, there was no issue. So you weren't you know mad or um, angry that maybe he followed you there. I knew he didn't follow me there. Or he had showed up at your work. Well, if him being out there, if I'd known he was out there, that wouldn't have bothered me at all. What bothered me was the surprise of it. Okay. Sure. That's like an ambush. Yeah, and with the rest of everything else. Yeah, that's like an ambush. Not only, not only I'm gonna screw you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ambush you. And like I said, had I seen the ambush, I wouldn't have gone to no darn ambush. Have you uh, ever and, drawn and your then, gun on somebody? Before? No, sir. No, sir. Not ever. How long have you had a CWP? A long time. What does it say on? Uh. It depends if the, I don't know if they changed the issue date when they were given a new one. 
This was 10, 25, 17, and they last how long? Uh, usually. Five. Well, I've had one. I've had one ever since I've been a judge. How long have you been a judge? Sir? 24 years. So you've had a concealed weapons permit for 24 years? Or however long, however long, I don't know if it went that far back, but whenever. How long, okay, so whenever concealed weapon permits came into effect, you got one. Mm -hmm. And you've had one since. Because I've been a judge, like I said, I've been a judge for, since 90, 90, I started at Lyman in 94. So what does that make it? Four, three, um, and if they had them then, I had one. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're 94, 14 is 20, 27 years, mm. roughly. Mm. I'm not great at math. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> off the top of my head, no. um, but, but I've, I've had one, I've had one whenever they came out. Okay. So and and I, was, I was judging when they came out. And you've never, you've never drawn it on somebody. Mm. Okay. No need to. Okay. Wouldn't been a need then. Somebody behaved to say. Okay. And, 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 and the thing... I've, I've been in different places. I've at Landrum. I was a magistrate for ten years, and I was the magistrate at Landrum. Mm -hmm. That's the little bogus call. I was the magistrate at Landrum, and I had my own office, which was there at the. Um, it's a rental uh, storage facility place. There was a, the office was in it, and I was there by myself. Yes, sir. I had I had a constable, but he wasn't there all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm armed in there. Okay. And I go to different places. And I'm armed at different places too because I I do like a circuit. I do Landrum, Union, Lyman, and Spartanburg. Mm -hmm. Do and, you carry a gun with you every day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially since all this after the George Floyd stuff and all this. Yeah, all the all this y'all y'all. I used to, I used to maybe have I had one in the car with me all the time, but I've really started carrying. With the last two or three with years. That, with uh, with some that. of the attitudes. Mm -hmm. Well, just, just, just the lawlessness. I mean, around here it's got crazy. Okay. Used to, like I said, used to. <laughs> I, I'm death penalty certified. I've done two death penalty trials. I was a contract public defender over in Greenville. I've, I've handled uh, L. Rukins from Chicago cases. Noah Robinson, Jesse Jackson's brother with L. Rukins and all that stuff. I've dealt with all them cases like that. And I've never had anybody say anything to me at all. Mm -hmm. Nor did I. Nor did I fear about one of L. Rukins or somebody or just somebody I've dealt with on a case coming up to me on the street doing something. Okay. Because I try to deal with people, even in the courtroom. I try to deal with people where when they leave there, they may not like what they got, but they felt they were treated fairly. And and and, that, and that's the way I deal with people. This fellow, I ain't never dealt with him, <laughs> so I don't I don't understand all this, other than telling other than telling him to leave. So I appreciate you coming in voluntarily and speaking with me, sir. Um, I'll tell you, I um, I spoke to Mr. Jocelyn earlier, mm -hmm. um, just to you know kind of keep you up in front too, um, just because of the um, the nature of this case and all the um, all the history behind it and everything. Partial. I'm going to complete a report, mm -hmm. and I will send it to the Greenville County Solicitor's Office for them to review. Going to charge him? Why do you not believe he? Why do you think he didn't commit a crime? After speaking with the solicitor's office and the city attorney, um, the opinion was that there is not proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Of what? Of being convicted of a crime, sir. What? What crime, though? It doesn't matter what crime. Any crime. There isn't proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So, you have three witness statements? I believe I have two, yes sir. And you have videos? Yes. And 911 calls where he's threatening to shoot me? I know, I know it's not what you wanted to hear. Well, I knew you, were you, like you, it, well you just, you gotta, you gotta, listen. In the police report, I mean, I, he, he, I, sa I, he says, in the police report, he even says that I did not threaten him. I did not reach for my firearm. He had no justification to put a gun to my head. He does say that you did not threaten him and he did not touch his firearm. Yes, sir, you're correct. So what What reason did he have to point a gun at my head? It comes out of, uh, I believe his uh, statement was he was fearful, sir. <laughs> but you can he point said, the he, I, I already did. Y'all keep, de keep denying him. Well, sir, now, now the case is closed. 
um, I believe that that will no longer be an issue. Like I said, I know it's not what you wanted to hear. Um, I hate to be the one to tell you, but it is ultimately my job to tell you. So, well, you um, think you think you're doing the right thing because you said it ultimately it's up to you whether he gets charged or not. So you don't think you're doing anything wrong. It is, it is ultimately my decision, sir. Yes. So, <laughs> so anytime I'm I'm fearful, I can just put a gun to someone's head. I'm not going to answer hypothetical questions back and forth, sir. I, I completed a thorough investigation impartially and used two independent legal sources to form an opinion um like i said sir i'm sorry you i know this is not what you wanted to hear i can obviously tell you're upset but unfortunately it, it doesn't change where i'm at but i do believe um lawyer requests will be granted due to the case being closed now sir so if that helps you um in any other course you wish to take as far as I believe you'd set a restraining order. Yeah. Okay. All right. And yeah. that would be the most impartial thing for It's the best you can do, and then whatever yeah. power falls, it falls. Mm -hmm. Did Barry call y'all? I have not talked to him yet. No. Do do talk with him, because he's got he's got the rest of the okay. story. I've uh, I've been on the phone with a lot of people I, I, today. I, I got I a, lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of a lot of statements. I've been going through hours of body camera today. Um and my, you know, when I when I talked to you, I was actively typing mm -hmm. my supplemental report out. It's and I may have been talking nasty, but I wasn't. And and my my with the nine one one, my 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 biggest problem with that was and me talking that stuff is this this like we'll get to you. Mm -hmm. That that's my that's my biggest issue with that. What, and that, that's something y'all didn't have no control sure. over. But I'm but I'm sitting there with somebody that's threatening everybody he can threaten. Mm -hmm. And now he's he's surprised me on the street, and I'm as close to me to you, and I get we'll get back. With you, did, you know, and that he, ain't. that was you did not call nine one one when you were um, until you were right with him, correct? Well, when I didn't see him. Yeah, I mean, when, when so what I, what I'm asking is, um, you weren't in your truck when you called. No, no, I didn't see him. I didn't. Okay, see him. you were. Um, you were back against the wall. As I was against. I against the wall. Yeah. And you took. I know that picture mm -hmm. you sent me. And you're saying you called nine one one directly after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted. I wanted to get a picture of what he was doing mm -hmm. for Sled. Mm -hmm. And to uh, and to uh, do whatever y'all were doing. You know where y'all have have it. And I was doing nine one one. And if he left, I had a a thing. And if he didn't leave. Cause I figured y'all be there in about two minutes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you thought he was. We well, well yeah, yeah. Well, well, once I figured he'd just stay in the in the thing. Y'all be there in two minutes. Mm -hmm. He said, "Well, I wasn't doing nothing." Well, here's what he was doing. This fellow's been doing X, Y, Z. Give me a report. I'm, I'm taking it to the solicitor in Spartanburg where I can get my my thing. Yeah. And then and then he just he just he just. <laughs> Keep going. And had had y'all been there sooner, we wouldn't have been in the situation we are. But I understand. I sure. understand all yeah. that. But it put me in a bad position. That that not only am I in a bad position, I might not get the cavalry. Might not be here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's 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 what's going. Okay. And 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 I'm 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 against the wall there because I'm in a safe place with him in that truck. Mm -hmm. And when he decides to come out of that truck. I ain't in a good place. Okay. And then we're talking about we're talking about in a place less than this. Sure. Sure. Okay, and, 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 and that's 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 the biggest deal. And mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't know he was there. Mm -hmm. Had I rolled up Randall Street, I probably would have seen him. Mm -hmm. And I would have driven on around to y'all and I'd probably walked in the thing and told y'all to come 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 get a picture of this and make a report. Mm -hmm. But but I, I I like I said, I didn't see him. Didn't know who he was or anything. I like got right beside him. You didn't expect to see me, did you, Judge, or whatever he said? Sure. And I froze because I didn't know whether he was behind me or what. And I kind of did like that. And then I see him. He's standing. He's looming over me with that sign. Yeah. Then, and he could have hit me in the head with the sign. And that's why. And it's like if I moved, I don't know what he was up to. Mm -hmm. And that's a sinister thing when he's done followed. <laughs> Patrolling all the chief police and all that, and I'm I'm just laying out there in the wind, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm not I'm and I'm not 
I'm not in a position where I'm going to put my life in jeopardy for some fool. I'm just, I'm just not. I'm, 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 I'm there. I'm hanging in the wind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. And then that's, that's, as, that's as plain as I can make it. Because like I said, if, if he'd not, if he'd, if he'd stayed that truck and y'all got there on time, there wouldn't have been nothing to talk about other than a report to, to do it. Okay. And then I'm, and I'm, I'm not. I, I, I just when I'm gonna let you make copies of these. I have the uh, okay. report already, but I will did make. You, did you get look? There's, there's a couple of them in there, two different ones. Looks if you got all them. Chief should be Chief Coffin. That should be. Um. This other one was uh yeah Matt Wise. Um, I do not have. Make it copy of them. And see, like I said, if if I if I was hitting him cold and didn't know nothing about it, there wasn't nothing to be afraid of. But you have okay. There wasn't nothing to be afraid of. But I'm I'm I'm, I'm dealing with John Dillinger at this point. Well, let's step on down. I don't have anything further for you. Did you did you get that? Um, I will, I'll, you want me to get copy? Well, if you want them, I'll, I'll be happy to. That's fine. And that that that'll show what the what the time frame was him coming down sure. here. 